This section of the Joint Replacement Patient Education Program at Huron Valley Sinai Hospital covers what to expect at the hospital, including information about pain management and post-operative care. Including the day of your surgery, you can expect to stay in the hospital for two to three days. During that time, you will participate in physical therapy, or PT, and occupational therapy, or OT. There are important differences between the two types of therapy. PT will help you regain the ability to safely walk, move, climb stairs, and perform exercises to increase your strength. OT will help you learn new techniques to independently perform daily self-care, such as dressing and showering. In other words, PT helps you get from here to there, and OT teaches you what to do when you get there. Let's start at the beginning, when you arrive at the hospital. After check-in, you will be taken to pre-op holding to begin the pre-op routine, which includes the following procedures. You will change into a hospital gown, vital signs will be taken, and a pre-op checklist will be completed. An IV will be started, and dentures, glasses, contact lenses, and prosthetic devices will need to be removed. Once these procedures are completed, a visitor may be able to stay with you until you go to the OR. During your surgery, your visitors will wait in the surgical waiting lounge. They will need to check in with the volunteer at the desk. Your case number now can be used to track your surgical progress. After surgery, the surgeon will look for your visitors in the waiting area. Prior to surgery, you should also perform coughing and deep breathing exercises. These will help keep your lungs clear and prevent pneumonia after surgery. Your nurse will talk with you about how and how often to do these exercises, which you will do after as well as before surgery. Before surgery, members of the anesthesia team will see you. You will be asked about your surgical history and the anesthesia plan will be discussed. The choice of anesthesia is a decision between you, your surgeon, and the anesthesiologist. The plan is individualized to meet the needs of each patient, and you're encouraged to ask questions. Pain control is an important aspect of your recovery. The goal is to keep your pain at a level acceptable to you, and that allows you to participate in therapy and increase activity. You will be asked to rate your pain each time we talk with you. Pain is rated on a scale of zero to 10 with zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain imaginable. It's important for you to determine your comfort number. Starting today, in preparation for surgery, we recommend you practice rating your pain and setting goals for comfort. Here are some tips for controlling pain. Pick a comfort number and try to keep your pain around that level. Report pain when it starts using the pain scale and report any side effects, such as nausea, vomiting, or itching right when they start, because we can help. Frequently, surgeons will order a PCA pump for pain control. The surgeon orders the amount of medication he or she wants you to have and the time allowed between each dose. When you push the button, you can receive the medication if the time limit allows. Oral and IV medications can both be very effective. The goal is to move to oral pain medication as soon as possible. You cannot go home with your pain button. Let your physician know which medications have worked well for you in the past and which medications have not worked well. Achieving adequate pain control on oral pain medications is an important part of preparing for discharge. The doctors and nurses here at Huron Valley Sinai Hospital are dedicated to the comfort of our patients. While you may not be completely pain-free after surgery, we want you to be comfortable and your pain to be tolerable. You should feel a little better every day. Most importantly, we want you to remain safe while you are on your pain medication after surgery. 
Additional information about how the doctors and nurses help you manage your pain after surgery will be provided to you in the surgery preparation class offered by Huron Valley Sinai Hospital. Immediately following surgery, you will be moved to the recovery room. This room is bright and noisy. You may have an oxygen mask on your face when you wake up. If you are cold or uncomfortable, please let your nurse know. Your recovery room nurse will closely monitor your vital signs, surgical site, IVs, alertness, and breathing. Expect to remain in the recovery room for one to two hours. This will depend upon how quickly you wake up from anesthesia. Following your post-op recovery period, you will be moved to your room on the orthopedic unit, where the focus will be on recovering from the effects of anesthesia, monitoring your blood pressure, pulse, breathing, and need for oxygen, pain control, blood clot prevention, education and safety, physical and occupational therapy for mobility and self-care and discharge planning. For knee patients, the continuous passive motion machine provides continuous passive motion to the knee joint. If it is ordered by the surgeon, it should be used as much as possible when you're resting in bed. The CPM decreases pain and stiffness by increasing circulation to the surgical site. However, it doesn't take the place of increased activity or therapy. After your surgery, you will be on bed rest initially upon arrival on the orthopedic floor, followed by increased activity as tolerated. You may sit on the side of the bed or get up and sit in a chair, depending upon how you feel. This might even happen the night of the surgery. Early activity and walking will lead to a more rapid recovery. The day after surgery, you will participate in therapy in the morning and in the afternoon. You will work with a physical therapist to improve walking and other activities and will continue to perform physical therapy exercises on your own as able. You will also work with an occupational therapist to improve your independence with daily tasks such as dressing and bathroom tasks. Being active after surgery is very important for your recovery. Patients can expect to sit in a chair twice each day for at least two hours, including mealtime. Also, for safety reasons, patients should request assistance before getting out of bed. On the second and third day after surgery, therapy will continue with morning and afternoon sessions. In preparation for leaving the hospital, you will be assisted by the discharge planner, a registered nurse who works with patients to obtain health care and community services needed after discharge. The discharge planner also works with staff nurses, therapists, and physicians to create a safe and smooth discharge. If you are discharged to your home, you may need additional help for a few weeks. In some cases, a short stay at a subacute rehab facility is necessary for additional PT and OT prior to returning home. If this is the case, you will be asked to identify three possible rehab facilities to which you would be interested in going. Please give this some thought prior to surgery. Before leaving the hospital, it will be important that you view any assigned learning activities in the hospital's Get Well Network. Request a pain pill before you leave. This will make your drive home more comfortable. Be sure to review all your discharge instructions with your nurse. For your convenience, home prescriptions may be filled through our outpatient pharmacy first fill program. Ask your nurse. You will need your ID, insurance card, and a method of payment for any copay if applicable. And remember to take all your belongings home, including any new equipment and all new information. After discharge from the hospital, continuing rehab will be very important to your recovery. Your outcome is greatly affected by your commitment to your exercises. The sooner you begin exercising in advance of your surgery, the better.
And the more committed you are to your exercises after surgery, the faster you'll recover. We recommend staying as active as possible before as well as after your surgery. If you have hip surgery, here are three important precautions to keep in mind. These typically remain in effect for four to six weeks after surgery, but this time frame is individualized by each surgeon for each patient. Be sure to follow your doctor's instructions. Do not bend forward past 90 degrees at the hip while standing, sitting, or lying down. Do not sit on low or soft seats because this force is bending at the hips. Do not cross your legs at your knees or your ankles. Keep your legs apart at all times. Do not cross your legs whether standing, sitting, or lying down. Use a pillow to keep your legs apart in bed. Do not plant your feet and twist your body. When lying in bed, avoid reaching across your body. When standing, pick your feet up and take small steps in the desired direction. To protect your hip, your occupational therapist has additional handouts regarding sexual intimacy. You will also be provided with instructions for specific exercises to prepare you for hip or knee surgery. Be sure to review the instructions and perform the exercises as directed by your doctor. Lastly, there's a variety of adaptive equipment available to help you dress without violating your hip precautions. Before deciding to purchase any special equipment, be sure to discuss this with your therapist, who may have specific recommendations based on your home situation. Generally, insurance does not cover bathroom equipment, such as shower chairs or tub benches. Occasionally, a bedside commode will be covered. Raised toilet seats are generally covered for total hip replacement patients. If you choose to purchase any adaptive equipment, the discharge planner will help you obtain these items. This concludes the Joint Replacement Patient Education Program. Please be sure to review the additional material provided and attend one of the classes offered at Huron Valley Sinai Hospital. We appreciate your trust in us and look forward to serving you.